Julian Assange in WikiLeaks, is he a journalist or a useful idiot or a man trying to instigate a governance come political revolution or contrarian? Of course he affects the culture of WikiLeaks. He is a man who believed everything should be laid bare. So do I, but everything but is everything being laid bare? Is the information being released useful for certain political factions and states? Is it dependent on media organizations run with it? On civic societies groups analysing this and using it to advocate and reform? Lastly, does the public really care? Some people turning up to a protest does not constitute the general public. And just because people turn up at a protest doesn't mean their main reason to protest is about the idea driving the protest and they all centre on themselves. You can concentrate on the macro like Julian, but will you get to a transformation of how society operates or will it just change how plans and reactions and intercessions by the state and elites will take into account the new reality? In other words, the deep state has got even deeper. Surely it is better to go down the micro route and show up the rotten state of affairs at the local level and work your way up and let the state collapse in on itself. But will you end up replacing it with another corrupt state? Will people needlessly suffer? So if there is no other control and uh, manipulating us, instead the order is of us, the power is corrupted and attracted to the corrupted, what to do? There has to be an alternative to society structures that works in parallel with society and is integrated with society but is still not of it, but determinately exposes truth in all arenas including most arguably in the alternative, a desperate need to get evil on their own, for a long time to come evil will be the shadow that follows humanity. So the final victory over evil is a long way in the distance, true there may be genetic engineering and genetic selection and rewiring the brain and biology of the human and integration with computing and other technologies to modify human behavior but we cease to be human then we become another species who may decide to extirpate what remains of humanity the new man whose morality is destroyed by a microchip destroying all man who seeks to wrestle with his conscience to get to a higher plane of morality to be able to walk through the valley of temptation and see it rid our way to meaningless distractions and your battery hormones constantly trying to provoke you like a hardened beekeeper with bee stings you are the warrior that has come through the a battle can you now be trusted for the biological rob- robot hasn't been there and if the weapon of weapon of the future was to expose him to these temptations would he be found wanting believe it or not the last passage is tied up with wikileaks what kind of present death or future do we want now if he did a crime then no matter what good he has done and potentially will do he must be held to account for that crime Surely WikiLeaks, if based on a good culture and constitution, will survive without him. Surely if we had a culture of citizen journalism that networks and is ever vigilant, then the avenue exists to publish information as WikiLeaks is done. So, if the Swedish justice system is not to be trusted when it comes to a fair trial, then what justice system is? Why should I or anyone else expect fair treatment of any justice system in this world? But remember this, everything should be laid bare. This should mean your correspondence with the state and private entities your tax affairs and wages, and bank account balance and assets. Then there is the penalties for those who refuse to go along with a transparent society, and for those who still connive in the corridors and without paperwork, who go into the area that WikiLeaks is useless at. That is the area beyond recorded information. The greatest failing of Julian Assange is that he will be a one-man revolution. Remove him and the revolution dies. For him to be a success, he would have needed to inspire others to the point that no face or figurehead was required. For if he did that, what would it matter if they come for Julian or others? The disclosure revolution will continue, maybe to the point that it will cause an earthquake to render asunder any jail that he was incarcerated in. Of course, Julian concentrated on the United States and its allies, and not Russia and China and other states that have restrictions in human rights and are more than happy to fill in the breach left by the US and its chums if they withdraw from intervening again in other countries' affairs. That is the nature of statecraft. I assume Julian believes by reforming liberal democracies which are, are the potential of high living standards, he would hope that the reimagined culture would lead to a fervor, fervor to see it exported to all four corners of the world. That is, the USA and its allies would become WikiLeaks. Putin and his friends would now have a reason not to hate the US state, but the American people. Now there is a high court case going on at the moment in London adjudicating on whether Assange should be extradited. But while it is one of the sparks for this, another is from the response on George Galloway's YouTube site. Someone posited that Julian would be shot dead by the Russians if he exposed truths about them that they want to keep hidden. He was criticised by a few correspondents and I thought I would put in my tuppence worth in some, but not full support for him. Two of my comments were removed. There was no expletives, and they were balanced, yes, in my opinion. 
Now, one was left as the moderators of the YouTube channel Game Diasuma was reborn, but the other two? Think about this. You are either in this context have a choice of Julian Assange, an advocate for free speech versus Putin cracking down on anti-war protesters and political dissidents and invading Ukraine. So the moderator, from my angle, stymied my contribution to skew an argument, therefore is on the side of Russia and not free speech. So what I am trying to get at, there's a lot of people, not all, who are pro the release of Julian Assange, but not for free speech, but for political reasons. I am sure Julian is well aware, because it is not based on principles, but based on politics, that they, if I politically suited them, would stab him in the back. Many of these same people were against the Syrian regime for a long time. When Russia aligned themselves with the Ba'ath Party, then they flipped over and became supporters. They are great at opposing human rights abuses, and rightly so, in states near and far, except when they are the darlings of anti-American imperialism. This means this, their support of human rights is based on politics and not principles. It has a price. They have commodified the human being and reduced us to a number. How about supporting people who uphold human dignity and human rights everywhere and don't come out with dumb cultural excuses, otherwise you legitimise female genital mutilation at all? How about not being beholden to the great power game? Again, the same side defends Russian aggression in Ukraine, claiming there was a threat of NATO expansion. Threat is no good. It has to be a fact. It wasn't going to be a fact as Russia and Ukraine have effectively been at war since 2014 when Russia invaded Crimea and interfered in the east of that country. It would be an insane move that would cause World War III. It would be just like Russia invading Ukraine but to bring us closer to World War III. That would be reckless and stupid. Oh, hold on. They did that. Now, I know also many of them would say that Ukraine is in, the Russian, in Russia's sphere of influence. In other words, might is right. So these two conditions mentioned were fulfilled in the Cuban Missile Crisis, and this wasn't imagined. The nukes were real, and Soviet Alliance was real too. Would the US be entitled, according to this opinion, to invade Cuba with its regular army, and not a ragbag paramilitary force of emigres? Is Ireland Britain's sphere of influence? Must Ireland acquiesce to London? For two years now, I keep on hearing that Ukraine is going to be defeated. That the superior technology of Russia will defeat them, how wonderful their hypersonic missiles are, how surgical the Russian army is with its bombs, people cheerleading the Russian war machine, and Two Face telling you that they are an anti war. The Ukrainians want peace too, and if Russia leaves and goes back over the international border, that will be a face accompli in spite of all the damage caused. Ed Snowden would have had a reason to whistleblow back in the 30s as well in the United States with segregation and intervention for big business in Central America in the backdrop. Would he have went to Nazi-driven and riven Germany or Stalin directed USSR as a safe haven? It may be a safe haven for Snowden, but for many citizens and recently stripped of citizenship, it would not be. And that's the way to look at it, not allowing Snowden to be used as a political tool by any government. If Snowden was to reveal the identity of Russian spy operatives and missions to the point that the Russian spy craft was compromised for a generation, then Snowden wouldn't be around for long. And a lot of seamen opponents of capital punishment would have no problem in Snowden being executed, claiming that he had endangered world peace and that deterrent must be put in place. So when it comes to social media, of which via its comment section YouTube is involved in, there has to be reforms, even if those reforms are directed by legislation, such as layers to the comment section, with the first layer moderated by the channel proprietor and his or her agents, the next layer moderated by people approved by the moderator, the next layer decided by people reporting comments, and then the final layer where all the comments can be seen. But with this final layer, people, people that you have red flagged, not individually block comments, or people you trust the red flag will, if you choose, not be in this comment section. But again, this is personally for you, as this is the free speech comment section. As soon as your comments have been removed, you should be informed and why, and given a chance to appeal. All these procedures should be clearly seen by everyone, where individual communities decide on the legitimacy of the report. Just think, commie, Trotskyist, Marxist, Leninist, Anarchist, liberal, libertarian, conservative, religious and spiritual, Christian, etc., socialist, and networks of people, each with their own take on censorship because we all censor at some point. But I like to think if a point is fair and cogent and upends my argument, I wouldn't censor. 
for their immediacy I only hurt myself and I will hurt society and therefore in the long run hurt myself. So from George Galloway's YouTube site I've included my comments along with other comments on a long screenshot. I had to go to my comments section in history in desktop mode of YouTube on my Android phone to retrieve one of them. The other I'll put on a screenshot just in case that I was removed. I have put them up to see that they are fair and reasonable and in reaction to which other contributors. I don't understand people who want to live in an echo chamber. How can the views be tested and improved? Why close up so much dialogue and patch that may get you quicker to the world you want to live in? Just remember, there is the political left and there is the ide ideological left. They may be crossover. Also, that Marx is one interpretation of communism and people since then have interpreted his canon in different ways. I am mentioning all this as I am dealing with George Galloway's YouTube site and I am thinking specifically of many of his followers. Finally, we are all journalists if we choose to. Some may be professional who are deemed to have special protection in legislation, which should make you suspicious. They need to make a living out of it now and into the future. They are addicted to the access to all areas and the celebrity and the priority. They are not ideological to the point of serving time in prison and having their career ruined. They along with the company that employs them have a vested interest in, in maximizing profit and doing so for the least amount of work and causing meaningful consternation. And by the way I am talking about all rich journalists and not the few who have diverged from the above principles. Who owns the news? The facts. It's not the journalists, it's us. They may, like the, the rest of us, own their particular interpretation, but that's not the facts. It may become news in that it may cause a political upheaval. If we have access to all information independent of journalists and can readily collate the necessary stories pertinent to the event, then is it news anymore? Is news just a biased story to benefit someone or group somewhere? 